from the campus of Edinburgh University in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome to today's Quidditch match as we feature the Alfred University Saxons and the Weekle Griffins. The Griffins off to a quick start getting the first 10 of the game on a goal by Jordan Schulman. Welcome everyone, Patrick Pearson. Glad you could be with us on this gloomy afternoon in Edinburgh, the Saxons and the Griffins on the pitch for some messy, mucky, muddy Quidditch. Gloomy skies, the Griffins out in front. The Saxons hailing from Alfred, New York, Alfred University wearing the purple and the Weekle Griffins in the gray while also getting some roster assistance from the home team Edinburgh Scots, couple players on loan from the Scots, including Brad Neno, number 10, who had just scored that second goal now for the Griffins. 20 nothing, Weekle out in front. Neno, one of the better players for Edinburgh, is on loan for this match here this afternoon to the Griffins. Griffins in gray trying to move the quaffle up. Pass is loose to the right side. Maul is beat. The Saxons down 20 early, looking to get on the board. Emily Eisenberg, number six, is beat and has to give it up. And now the Griffins back on the charge. 21 is Sarah Keenan. Agile young lady for Weekle. Tough defensive assignment there. The Saxons able to elude the bludger. And that goal is good. The Saxons are awarded 10. No, they are not, the officials say. Goal initially called good, then taken away. Now the Saxons actually awarded 10 points. 20 to 10, Griffin's out in front. Deep pass, the quaffle goes awry, and the Saxons will once again try to put together an offensive charge. Thomas Bodoin, 92, gives it up. And slipping down, but managing to get rid of the ball. First, the Griffin's shot goes awry. Keenan hands it off. Griffin's on the attack. Not a lot of work by the beaters here in this game as the offenses have had a pretty easy time of it. Now, another goal for Weekle, and it is 30 to 10. Beaters being stingy with their bludgers at this point. Not a lot of defensive challenges. Saxons set up for an attack run. Deflecting the bludger, nice job. And a second time, still on the move. Pass to the backside, goal, knocks down the hoop, but it counts as it goes through, 30 to 10. The Saxons cut the lead down to 10. So often we see teams employ the lob to the backside of the goals, try to get it over the defense and score a cheap 10. Neno on the move. That one is deflected. Push by the Saxons. Deflected again. And that goal, a hard shot with the right hand. Yeah. 
Neno calls for brooms down as they're getting a clarification on a deflected bludger. Is the bludger live until it hits the ground? Can you deflect it off one opponent and knock out another with the deflection? The discussion appears to be that you can. And so we will continue to play under that assumption. Griffins out in front, 30 to 20. Weekel Griffins from Allegheny, New York, a community team. Neno with a rush up the left side, looking for some operating room, deflected away. Ball is tracked down by Hugic. Hugic slips and gives it up. Nice move to duck under. The Griffins still with control of the quaffle. One-handed catch, no good. But a nice job by Maul to pick it up. Maul drops it off. Now up the right side. Good beat by the Saxons as they get the quaffle back. Up the left side goes Eisenberg. Pass back behind the goal. Hugic with it, looking for some operating room. Lob is good, and the Saxons tie it up at 30. Thirty all, the score confirmed by the official scorer on the pitch. No sign of our snitch yet this afternoon for this match. Neno with a deep lob and it goes through. Straight through the center goal. Neno from downtown connects for 10 points. The slow motion replay confirms. Absolutely tremendous shot by Neno. Gives the Griffins a 40 to 30 lead. Rusin, number eight, protecting the quaffle with his body. Throws back, nobody home, but it will be picked up there. And the Saxons maintain possession of the quaffle. Bodoin considering his options. No beaters coming up yet to challenge him. That pass intercepted. Keenan has it momentarily. Goes down into the muck and the mire. Oh, and then she's beat, so she has to give it up. That's a lose-lose situation there. Maul with it. She is beat with a hit on the foot. She has to give it up. Rusin with it operating for the Saxons. Cross pitch, and there's a scrum there as Eisenberg and Keenan go after the quaffle. Still fighting, still fighting for it. Now the quaffle is loose. Bodoin, Bodoin tracks it down. Good position now for the Saxons, and they get a clean shot off. Looked like it went through as it knocked over the goal, and it did. Ten points for the Alfred Saxons. Shot goes through the hoop. Counts for ten points, but knocks down the hoop in the process. That does not negate the ten points. We are square at 40. The Griffins and the Saxons locked in a good one. Seekers and the Snitch still no-shows in what is a very well-fought battle. An easy goal for Neno. 
10 more on the board for the Griffins as they step out in front by 10, 50 to 40. That was nearly uncontested. Fifty to forty in this seesaw battle. Eisenberg with the multicolored socks. Saxons methodical on offense here as they try to knot this one up at 50. And beat, good job defensively by the Griffins as they're able to stymie that offensive threat by Alfred. No beat, pass. Defended nicely as Neno collects that one right in front of the left goal. Neno on a hard charge. That shot is deflected, but Neno tracks it down behind the goal, still looking for some help. Throws it out in front. Kicked out to the side. Eisenberg chasing. Rusin as well, giving chase for Alfred, and the Saxons come away with it. Quaffle in the hands of Emily Eisenberg. Eisenberg looking for some operating room, being challenged behind the goal, and the ball is taken away by the Griffins. Griffin's getting a lot of help today from the Edinburgh Flying Scots teammates that have stepped in to help bolster a short roster. Neno on the charge again. Throws that one back behind. Maul is getting harassed behind the goal. And trying to maintain possession of the quaffle, but eventually she is beat. Has to give it up. And the Saxons come out from behind their own goal. 50 to 40 Griffins on a gray afternoon. Patrick Pearson, glad you could be with us for some exciting Quidditch action from Edinburgh University. The Weekle Griffins enjoying a 10 point lead on the Alfred Saxons. Repair time on the goals. Common occurrence. Overcast skies here above the pitch. It is the field under the stairs at Edinburgh University. Good beat that time by the Saxons trying to short circuit any defensive capabilities for the Griffins. And now a pass, a little bit low, still rolling around the pitch. A kick, and it is picked up by Alfred. Hugic is beat, he has to give it up. Maul now in possession of the quaffle for the Griffins. Maul is beat and drops the quaffle. Takedown and a beat. Uh, now a second beat as they say the first one hit the quaffle. Does not count. Rusin operating with the right hand. Hugic to the right hand side. Maul defensively picks him up. That shot is off the mark. Neno picks it up for the Griffins. 50 to 40. And we've reached a lull in the scoring after both teams came charging out of the gates. And the snitch has made an appearance. Bringing a new aspect to the match. That shot is good and it's a tie ball game as the Saxons knotted up Ah, now that's a goal for the Griffins. Backside goal, 60 to 40. The Griffins up by 20. We are still in snitch range though. 
A successful catch of the snitch is good for 30. For whichever team can corral the slippery snitch. Pass and a shot deflected. Maul has it. Running into some traffic. Moving up the left side. Trying to get a shot off. That one goes over the goal. The Seekers back in action now. And the hunt for the snitch will begin in earnest. Slippery pitch on which the snitch has to operate. Retreating is the snitch as she tries to keep the action alive in this contest. Saxon's down 20, would like to have a quick catch of the snitch and another goal up through the center hoop is good. Arms raised, the Griffins go up now 70 to 40. The Saxons need to catch the snitch to even this one up. Casey Bush, 59, in pursuit of the snitch as he is the seeker for the Saxons. Hugic retreating for Alfred University. Alfred looking for some operating room, passed into the open space in front of the Weekle goal. And a charge all the way downfield. Another goal up and in for the Griffins, 80 to 40 as the scorer behind the net raises the arms indicating the goal is good and the Griffins currently doubling up the Saxons. The Seekers now getting instructions from both sides so that they know the score of the game. And Casey Bush captures the snitch for the Alfred Saxons. That's 30 points for Alfred. And that would seem to indicate the end of our match. On the scoreboard, 80 to 70. And now we're having a discussion. Casey Bush says, yeah, I got the snitch. I got it, he says. 70-70, a score adjustment as the Griffins, after consultation with the official scorers, have lost credit for one of their previously earned goals. So it is 70-all. 70-all after the catch of the snitch indicates that we are going to go to overtime. So we will be back as the official resets the pitch for some overtime Quidditch from Edinburgh. As the pitch gets reset here for the overtime period between Alfred University and the Weekel Griffins, a review of the overtime rules. The teams have switched sides now. Alfred University is in purple, the Weekel Griffins in gray, although with some help from the Edinburgh Scots to help shore up the short roster. So there are also some players wearing orange participating for the Weekle Griffins. This is a five minute overtime period. The overtime period will end after five minutes or when the snitch is caught. The Alfred University Saxons ended the regulation period with a catch of the snitch. They were awarded the 30 points and that allowed them to tie the game and send it into overtime. So it is 70 all. Griffins again in gray with some help from the guys in orange and the Alfred Saxons in purple. 70 all overtime Quidditch here from Edinburgh. Patrick Pearson enjoying a good one with you. Sarah Keenan trying to aggressively go after the snitch. 
The Alfred Saxons now calling for their beaters to try to negate the Weekle Seeker. Send her back to her goal. She has to touch up. She has, and her pursuit of the snitch is back on. Saxons with the quaffle, trying to move it up. Now we have a scrum just past the midline. Eisenberg throws it back. The Saxons trying to play a little quaffle control. Snitch goes down and is given time to regroup and get back away from the Seekers. 70 all is our score. The Saxons with a good opportunity here in range. They have yet to get a shot off. Through the middle, that one goes off target. And the chase is back on. Casey Bush almost catching the snitch there. Bush, the Alfred University seeker, ends the match as he comes away with the snitch. Nice job to reach around. Watch again. Grabs the snitch and capturing both snitches in today's match. The Alfred University Saxons are victorious in overtime by a score of 100 to 70. Congratulations to the Alfred Saxons on today's overtime victory, 100 to 70 against the Weekle Griffins. There you see the double snitch victory. Alfred Saxon scoring four goals and catching the snitch twice to account for their 100 points. A 30-point win over the Griffins.